Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome to Lord of the Rings. We are playing uh, Journey Del Journey Along the Anduin. So grab that and set it up. Oops, forgot to hit this setup button as well. Okay, and let's get straight into this. Journey to the River. Emerging from Mirkwood Forest with an urgent message for Lady Galadriel, you must now make your way south along the Anduin River in order to reach the Forest of Lorien. As you leave the forest behind, you notice that you are being pursued. Each player reveals a card. You blam! You blam! And that has Surge. You blam! Oh, man. Okay. That's a pretty harsh start. Could have been worse. We have to get one of these anyway. Flip over. As you approach the location of a small raft stashed on the riverbank, a fearsome hill troll emerges from behind a grouping of rocks and attacks. Search the encounter deck for one hill troll if one is not already in play. Shuffle the encounter deck. So basically, this is a good example of how this quest can be quite random with its setup. There's a number of treachery cards that have no hits at the in setup, which they'll fizzle. So if you're lucky, you get two fizzling treachery cards and then you end up with one hill troll. But sometimes you'll get multiple surges and you'll end up with like five cards out here or they'll all be monsters that attack first turn or something. So it can be quite difficult depending on the, how it starts. This is not a bad start for us, depending on what we draw. Anyway, so this is eight to pass and it's a great theme because we've come out of Mirkwood Forest and now we've run down this hill being chased by the crows and uh, a hill troll turns up that we've got to beat before we can actually get in the boat because you know we cannot defeat this stage until we kill all hill trolls in play now there is a second hill troll in here so if we're really unlucky we'll draw it okay let's have a look at our hand and see what we've got this isn't a bad hand but I am going to take the mulligan because there is a Pacific card I'm hoping to get you blam! And we get it. Booyah! Westfield Horsebreaker. Nice. And we've even got Quick Strike, which is great news as well. The only thing that would make this hand better is if we had a Horn of Gondor. Okay, so this is a terrible hand. We've got three dead cards. Four dead cards, so we're definitely going to take this mulligan. Come on, Vassal the Windlord. Booyah! Okay, we don't get Vassal, but we do have a Faint. Okay, so that wasn't a particularly good draw. Okay, we'll draw the new cards. Oh, and we'll set this guy as the first player. Okay, so this isn't particularly great. Let's go one two and place out a blocker we're going to go one two and place out this bloke quest 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 this guy gets plus one because dane gives plus one will and none of these guys are going to quest okie dokie your blammo. Each enemy and each location gets plus one threat. That's pretty nasty. And your blammo. Okay, so this is cool. So this guy's got one health, and Thane is putting one damage on all monsters revealed. But what's interesting is because he's got a very unique ability in the entire game. Because it doesn't it's outside the existing timing structure. It's a really a permanent effect. Which means in a way you can think of it as if this text was written in the manual, in the actual rule book. So it's before anything else occurs. Even uh keywords. So this kills this guy before surge even triggers. So he gets killed and 
The forced effect just means you're shuffling back. Okay, so that noise was very loud and it was my phone. So I just cut that out. And all I said was that when the crow gets killed by Thalen, he's got a forced ability. Or well, when he's killed at any time, he's got a forced ability that makes you shuffle him back into the deck. But uh, that was my phone and I've got to leave the house for a while. So I will be back soon. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it's been a while. Now... I've kind of forgotten where I was. I don't think I've... Yeah, I haven't drawn the second card, so bam. Oh, and it is a crow. So that just gets discarded. So we're actually plus one. So let's drag this up here. So I get rid of this. And... I think I'm going to discard this one to pump Eowyn's ability. So you can discard a card to get plus one. So we'll get one more. Noise. Now I do our engagement checks. We'll send both of these to here. So we'll do an optional engagement and then we'll do an engagement. Okay, so let's go Yablam and Yablamo. So basically if this card here has a plus attack, it's basically game over because we're defending with Gimli. Come on! Nice, lucky, get rid of a treachery. Your bonk. Now he's attacking for six and he's defending at two, which means he gets one, two, three, four wounds. Now those four wounds are actually given to him as attack. Now I've made a six stack of attack here because he has a base attack of two. So basically he gets one attack for every wound on him. So he's got four wounds, so he's four plus two, six attack. And I think I'm actually going to defend with Dane versus the Crow. And nothing happens there, so let's get rid of that. Okay, then I'm actually going to... What the hell, I've played the wrong card. Ah, oh, see, remember I told you I always get these cards uh, mixed up? This is the one I want to play. That okay, rid of Mark's finest, right? Is that you have to exhaust it to get two progress tokens. It's worth one will. Okay. What I meant to play is this card. I always get them mixed up. So nothing's actually different. We still got the one will, and this one can be discarded without actually uh, exhausting it. See, I'm actually really badly dyslexic, right? So I recognize cards by memorizing them, mainly by looking at the art rather than the names and the text because I find it really hard to read because I'm so dyslexic. Uh, so I always get these two mixed up because for some reason that my brain just thinks they're very, very similar cards. So I'm just going to move that out because that's what I was supposed to play and I played it as if I had that in hand. Because the plan has always been, because remember I took a mulligan to try and get that card. So, because I'm going to go action, discard Horsebreaker to ready a hero. So I discard this guy. And I ready Gimli now. And now I attack with six. And another, another, uh, Six, another three, so that is nine attack, which is one, two, three, four, five, six wounds. Okay, so that's that. Let's uh, refresh and draw more cards. Okay, we've still got this up, which is good. Uh, I think I'm going to spend one resource off here and place this here.
and then I'm going to go one, two, and place out River Mark's finest. Oh, and we should have traveled to the bank, which I forgot to do. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I had to leave the house after that phone call, so I got a bit confused as to what's going down. Okay, and now this bloke's turn. What's he got? Let's minus one resource off here and place Gondolin on done here. And let's minus two resources off here and place out... Uh, Celebran Stone on Thalen. Okay, so we're going to leave all those guys not questing again. Quest and quest and quest. We're not questing with this guy this time because we need his exhaust option to be available. And we're not going to quest with any of those guys. So that gives us pretty dodgy eight, but there's nothing in the staging area. So this should be fine. Ooh! Deal one damage to each exhausted character. We have no way of stopping that. So that is one wound, one wound. And no one's exhausted over there, so that's fine. And that is a nice, very, very good quest of five points. So what I'm going to do also is I'm going to exhaust and discard this to put two progress tokens on any location. That's one. Actually, let's uh, put it here. Two locate two quest points. So that actually gets discarded. So we're actually plus eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That takes us to seven progress. So let's discard one card from our hand. And we're going to discard this one here to pump her ability by one. And we'll get one more progress token. Bam, so that's eight. And this one is finished, but if the Banks of Ordering leads play, put it on top of the encounter deck. So it comes back here. So even though we've beaten this, there's eight progress tokens and we have eight, uh, you know, to pass. Remember, we cannot defeat it until the hill troll's killed. So we're going to kill the hill troll this turn and that'll solve that problem. Let's come over here. We'll go Khan and a Khan. We will defend... Let me think here. We'll defend this one versus the Hill Troll. Okay, so that is... Oops, I just drew a card instead of discarding. I just recently changed my hotkeys, so I sometimes press the wrong ones. Anyway, so he's attacking for six. He's defending at four, plus he has one health. So there's one damage overspill, okay? So... Basically, this guy says excess combat damage is increased as threat. So what you do, you add up the shield and the health, and that's how much damage is absorbed by the creature. And then there's one extra point in this case. So we get plus one threat. And I'm going to tap this guy and flip this one over. Remove one progress token from the current quest. Ooh, how annoying. We are now no longer uh, past. We're at seven instead of eight. But it shouldn't be a problem because we are going to attack for... I, mean, I can probably do both of these. Let's attack for six. That puts three wounds on him, which takes him to nine wounds. So he's defending at three. We put three wounds makes him nine so this guy is now killed and he goes into the victory display 
And then we're attacking with Legolas versus this guy. He is attacking for three. He's only got zero defense, so he's instantly killed. Remember, he shuffles back into the deck up here, though. And because of Legolas' ability, we get to place two progress tokens, which puts us back over the requirement, and we're back to completing that quest. So that's the end of that. After defeating the troll, you are able to board the raft and embark on a river voyage. As you depart, your enemies pursue, harassing the small vessel as you attempt to navigate the river. <laughs> okay, 16 to pass. As your enemies harass the raft, it is difficult to maintain balance and effectively fight them off. Reveal one additional card from the encounter deck each quest phase. Do not make engagement checks during the encounter phase. Each player may still optionally engage one enemy each encounter phase. So what's interesting now is that we draw three cards, but we have no engagement checks. So the real issue now is keeping an eye on our treacheries. So basically anyone that is about to die, so this guy has four wounds, one more wound will kill him. So we can't quest with him, even though he's worth three questing power. Okay, so let's refresh, and we've already drawn the card by accident, so let's get straight into it. Okay. There's nothing we want to do, nothing we want to play. And over here, we're just going to go one, two, and play out this guy. Okay, let's uh, quest. And quest. So we're questing for 11. That's a huge amount of questing because it's like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, let's draw your blam. One, that's fine, and draw. And this guy is automatically killed by Thane. And draw. Deal one damage to each character, 35 or higher. So that is an important point. We want to try and always keep underneath 35 threat. Most of the treacheries will trigger off 35 or higher. So, but this doesn't trigger. And because this is early, like most, most treacheries that whiff in later packs, actually have Surge if they whiff, but these early quests, if they whiff, they just whiff, so it just goes straight into the discard. So, we actually pass by 10. That is horrid, because we want to go a lot slower than this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, maybe we don't. There's no monsters out, so... Okay, and then we travel. Well, there's nothing for us to do here, so we'll just refresh and draw a card. Uh, draw a card is this button now, isn't it? Yes, okay. Okay, so we still have pretty terrible... We haven't got any of our mana fixing for the spirit deck yet. we we'll put out a uh, unexpected courage on uh, Dung here. So what do we got over here? Okay, so remember, we're at 35 threat, and we always need to stay under 35 if possible, especially because one more wound on Gimli will kill him. Now, we do have Gandalf, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and play out Gandalf, and use him to drop our threat by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we're going to quest. We've already set up our questers. That gives us eight. Yablamo. Oh, look at this. Evil Storm. When revealed, deal one damage to each character controlled by each player with threat of 35 or higher. We've just lowered our threat, so that whiffs. Excellent. Just drew cards again because I'm pressing the wrong freaking button. Okay, and the third card, because we draw one extra card now. Oh, it's a brown land. It's five. That's frustrating. We actually have to quest a lot more now. We need six to get past here. So this five is going to sit in the staging area for ages. 
Okay. I could have quested with Gandalf, but I wanted to keep him in case I wanted to kill something. So let's reset. And I've already drawn the card by accident, so no more drawing cards. We are not going to do anything here. We're still saving up. And look at this. We finally get a song. So we place out the song, and then we go one, two, three, and place out our daughter. And now I'm going to go a big quest because we want to try and get past a lot of that stuff. Still not going to quest with you though. Questing for 11, that's still only plus 3, that is weak. Okay, 1. 2 damage to someone of the first player. One, two, two, three. One damage to each exhausted character. So that is wound, wound, and wound. So very, very bad luck here. But that is why you don't. And look at this, we are now plus five. That's horrible. So that's uh, plus four. So I'm going to discard. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, oh, I've used all these things. Man, I am playing so badly. Okay, so that is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to tap you and delete two wounds off here. And then I'm going to attack into the staging area for one, two, three, four, which is enough to kill this guy. Okay, let's see if I can actually start playing a little better. Okay, we're both at plus now. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and place out another Gandalf. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm also going to go one, two, three, place out another this guy, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Two wounds, three wounds. Two wounds. So I'm going to go tap and get rid of both of these wounds. Then I'm going to go quest, 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 quest. Quest, quest, and he gets a added will from Dane. Okay, we're questing for 18. That's only plus 5. 1. This is killed by Thane. 2. 3. We're completely even, but I'm going to spend 1 and do a quick strike which allows me to make an attack out of order. And I'm going to attack with uh, done here into the staging area and kill this guy. Woohoo! And now we're plus two. Finally. One, two. Okay, this guy is discarded. And I'm going to do another attack into the staging area. We're attacking for three. So we put two wounds on here. Okay. And draw.
keep pressing the wrong button for draw. Okay. So, one, two, three, four. Place out Faramir. And we're going to go one, two off the spirit and place out with Mark's finest. Quest, 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 quest. Quest, quest. This guy actually has lost two attack because we healed him two wounds. So we're questing with one, two, three here. So I'm going to leave this guy untapped. And that gives us a total of negative three. So we're already negative. It's pretty bad. So let's draw. Gets a wound. This guy should have had a wound on him already from uh, Thane as well. Draw another one. Raise spent by one for each character he doesn't control, not committed. So we've got one, two, three. And this guy's got two. And the last. Wow. Okay. But before we calculate, I'm going to discard this thing to put two progress tokens on something. And I'm going to place it on the brown lands. And then I'm going to tap Faramir to add one, two, three quest tokens. So when this guy taps, he get every questing character gets plus one. So we are now plus one. We get a, finally get a token placed up here. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Okay, then I'm going to attack twice into the staging area. So we're attacking for three into the staging area, which is two wounds here. But even though this guy is an orc, so he's actually plus one against orcs only. So that is four into the staging area with one defense. That's not three wounds, one, two, three. Okay, a quick interlude that I noticed while editing. Uh, I actually missed placing a couple of tokens with Blade of Gondolin, and we should have had an extra quest point that turn from questing with Gimli because of Dane. So I've been I screwed up a little bit with uh, utilizing my cards. Basically, I forgot the... So we should have at least three more quest points on that brown lands at this very moment. Okay, so we're still pretty dire straits. Come on. Okay, so we're going to spend... Okay, let me think here. Five, four. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go... One, two, three, four. Place out Descendant of Thorndor, which is going to place two wounds on this guy. Because after he enters and leaves play, deal two damage. So we put two wounds on this guy. That is actually enough to kill him. So he also gets moved to the victory display. That takes three out. And that's that. So now I'm going to go. I forgot to actually heal with my healer last turn. I'm going to heal now just for safety. I'd rather lose the healer than lose my hero. Okay, your blammo with plus three. So let's draw. 
one. Each player raises a threat by one for each character not committed to the quest. We're actually one, two. And this guy is one, two, three. Wow, we're in the danger zone threat wise. Remove four progress tokens from the current quest. One, two, three, four. And the last one is another goblin sniper. Okay. Blam and you blam. Okay, we're going to tap this guy. I don't know why I didn't tap foreign thing for questing. He should be questing. So that is one, two, three extra quest power. And boom. That gives us plus four. But I'm also going to cast this card here. Choose an eagle alley and return it to the owner's hand. This guy goes back into our hand, which means we actually drop one point. So we're now at three. That's why I didn't have him questing before, I guess. And we're going to place two damage on here, which kills this guy as well. And now we're actually plus five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And this is discarded finally. And then we travel to Brownland, which is automatically discarded. So we finally got our, everything under control. We then tap done here and kill this guy and get one extra quest token because of the Blade of Gondolin. Oh, and I forgot to travel. Uh, yeah, we're not going to travel to any of those locations. Oh, God, I'm playing pretty fast and loose with my uh, game here. So, still haven't drawn our extra spirit card. So we've got all these wasted resources, but I'm going to go one, two, three, and do greeting, and drop this by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do we have a test of will in here? No. I'll just leave that like that. We're going to spend one resource off you and put out a mark. This gives him plus one attack. So he's now attacking into the staging area for four plus one extra if he's fighting a uh, fighting an orc. And that's about all we can do here. I guess we could put out a blocker, but I'd rather put out more Thorin doors. And he can't actually do anything. So we're going to go quest, 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 quest. How much is that? That's 10. Three. Yeah, okay, so requesting plus five. You blam, this gets shuffled back in. You blam. Each location is worth plus one. And you blam. Wow, a blight. Okay, so we're still plus two. Nice. No over questing. Let's 
gets discarded. We're forced to travel to the East Blight. And that's the end of that. Oh, and I forgot to do my healing again, so I'll just quickly do that now. We'll heal one wound off you. Okay, well, I guess I'll go one, two, three and place out another healer. May as well. Nothing else you can cast. This guy will go... There's no monsters in there. There's no point in casting three. He's not going to cast anything either. Okay, so let's go... One, two, three, four, five, six... Let's uh, do these guys as well, why not? Okay, he gets a wound. And a wound. Bam! So we're still plus two, nice. One, two. Let's tap you, and we get one, two, three. So we're actually plus five now, so that's another one, two, three. Then I'm going to attack twice into the staging area, where both of these guys are orcs, right? So we're questing for, we're, we're attacking for five into the staging area. So both of these guys are killed. We actually need six to kill this guy, but he gets one wound from Thalen, so he's also killed. And we get two, one, two. Because of each kill gets a point from Blade of Gondolin. And we'll tap our healer and kill clean those wounds. Okay. Still no monsters, so it's a waste to cast our foreign doors. So basically nothing to do here again. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, and place out Northern Tracker. Now, Northern Tracker is one of the most powerful early game cards. Basically, you can just clear locations in the staging area because every time he quests, you put a token on all the locations. So, 12 progress. So, we currently have got one, two, potentially four progress tokens a turn. So... We need to go quest with him for sure, quest with her, and let's uh, quest with this guy. That gives us plus three questing power. So we have 12 and we need 16, so... There's another three, yeah. So we're actually going to quest for that. Let's draw. We want monsters. Okay, excellent. He gets shuffled back in. Next. Okay, two damage to a questing character. He's got no questing characters. And this only hits the first player, so that does nothing. And the third card, beautiful. Okay, that couldn't have gone better for us. So, 12. Let me think here. So, that's 12 progress. So, yeah, I've tapped this guy. And that gives us another 3. Oh, that gives us more than that, doesn't it? We get uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
Now, if you're wondering why I tap them upside down, because the mod counts the will when they're sideways. So if you ever want to count will but not count tap cards, just tap them completely upside down. So actually plus three. And also, don't forget, we get a quest token on each of these locations. Uh, I think that one actually came out this turn. So just those two locations. And we're plus three. One, two. Three. Wow, just perfect. This is actually really well timed. But basically, we want this to go off when it's not in the uh, quest phase. And I'll show you why when we make it pass. So now that we've done that, we just... Uh, let's tap you and heal you. And then let's attack into the staging area twice using done here. And that kills this guy and this guy. And we now get two progress tokens placed because of Blade of Gondolin. We have passed this location. The ongoing harassment of your enemies has forced your raft to the shore, and you must now confront their ambush head-on. If you survive this attack, the path to the Golden Wood should be open before you. Okay, when reveal, reveal two encounter cards per player and add them to the staging area. So that is why you want to beat that quest outside of the quest phase, because if we release, like, four monsters, none of them will attack. Because they'll all, because we're, we're past the combat phase and the engagement phase. So we draw four cards. One. Oh no. Two. Three. Now we're outside the quest zone, so this does not get a wound from Thalen. And four. This one has Surge, so out comes another card. This one also, this one says reveal two extra cards per player. Wow. So there's a great example. That is why you want to, <laughs> that is why you want to complete that quest outside of the quest phase. Because if we did that, if we completed that quest, remember I was trying really hard to work out whether I had to tap this guy or not. Because I didn't want, I wanted to be able to, kill the two orcs to pass the quest using Gondolin or Legolas. But I didn't want to quest so well that I actually completed it in the quest phase. Because imagine if that had come out, all those guys would attack us. Okay, so that is what we're dealing with. So let's just get rid of the only treachery card that came out. Okay. Boom and Yablamo. Draw another card, and let's see what we've got. Still no spirit song, so we've got all these wasted resources. Well, I guess we'll just go one, two, three, cast another greeting, and we'll minus this by one, two, three, four, five, six. If we had a spirit song here, we could cast greeting a second time because we can, we've got four resources. That's not very cool. Now let's have a bit of fun over here. We have four resources on each person. So we can go one, two, three, four, play out Descendant of Thorondor and we can place two wounds. I'm then going to cast this one to return an ally to my hand, put Thorndor back in my hand, and we're going to place two wounds on this guy, which actually kills him. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and place out another descendant of Thorndor. And that is... Gonna place another 
two wounds. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and place out another descendant of Thorndor. And we're going to put two wounds. Now, if only I had my beekeeper, I could clean up here. So it would have been nice to have one. If we had one extra resource, it would have been good then we could play out we could use faint but I'd rather I don't know I just wanted to do the Thorndorf thing we we even could bounce him one more time why don't we just do that we'll play born aloft now this is a condition which can go on to descendant now this says cannot have attachments but only restricted attachments and this is not restricted so that gets discarded and this goes back into our hand, and we'll put another two damage down. And we'll kill this guy off. Okay, so we have a total of one five damage. Did I do that right? How many do we need to kill? We need Four. We need five damage on him. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll just keep going. Let's keep going. So now we need we have twelve in the staging area, but let's just read this. Skip the staging step for the rest of the quest. So there's no more nothing else gets added. Okay? So we only need to beat twelve. So we've got to, we can quest exactly. This is going to get discarded by tracker. So we actually only need 10. So that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, that's, that's enough. That, that passes. So we're actually set, we're progressing for 11. We are minus 1, but remember, and progress tokens get placed. All along here. And this only has two, so this is discarded. And bam, the plus one. Okay, so the questing is fine. Remember, nothing else gets added, and now we just have to deal with our monsters. So, we're going to optionally. Who's the higher threat? This guy is the highest threat, so. We're going to optionally engage this guy, and then this guy is going to automatically engage. Okay, so let's just quickly, I think I kind of screwed up everything here, because I've healed all the damage on Gimli, which I forgot about. So we're going to use this bloke to damage Gimli. Okay, so bam, and bam. And we're going to leave this undefended. Unfortunately, there's no damage. But it's going to put one wound on here. Which gives him one combat. So he's actually at three combat now. Which means I'm going to defend with Descendant. He gets plus one damage. So he's attacking for seven. He's got three. Which means a threat goes up by four. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, is this actually going to work? So that is three, six, which puts three wounds on. 
Oh, and he's plus one from here. Because this guy is plus one attack versus when, when they're not tabbed. So he's actually at four. And then we attack with this guy, and that is five. So we actually do beat him. Because we are tracking for a total of three, seven, eight, which means we place a total of five damage. Five and four, because you did descendant twice, is nine wounds. That means he is also killed. Yablamo. <coughs> and finally, we attack with Dane for two. This guy only has no wounds, so he is also killed. Shuffle back in. Once there are no enemies in play, the players have won the game. And bam, we have won the game. And before we do that, let's tap you. Heal this wound. And that's that. So that was a pretty bad run. We had a bad start. We're at 10 turns. Usually your 6-7 is a good a good run for this game. We did get a number of VPs. You can get tons of VPs in this game. So the way it works is you time this by 10. So that's 100 points. And then you minus your victory display, and then you plus any wounds and any dead heroes. Because I had two healers out, I've got no wounds and no dead heroes. So we end up with minus 11, so we are 89 points. I'll have to put a, uh, a point tracker up here as well, I think. Anyway, that is Journey Down the Anduin completed. Nice. Now... The next quest is Escape from Gold Door, which is notoriously difficult, and I don't know whether I'll really be able to beat it. I might, I might get frustrated bashing my head against it, trying to record it. It's like the kind of quest where you'll play it ten times and beat it once. At least in solo. I, I've never actually played it in multiplayer. But doing those 10 games, but also doing all the chatting and stuff could be quite frustrating. So I might just go straight to Hunt for Golem next. Now, in addition, uh, basically, when this mod eventually goes public, I have a bag up the top where I'm keeping all my decks. So for example, it's got a bag called the Merkwood Cycle, and out here we have the Wall and the Wanderer, which is the deck set that I used for the last video. So you've got the Wanderer and the Wall. Now, what I'd like to do is I now have this deck, which is the one that I used. So why don't you write in, your, in the comments what you want the deck to be named? The way I like to name my decks is I like them to be combined. For example, the other one was called The Wall and The Wanderer, and then one deck is called The Wall and one deck is called The Wanderer. So something like that. Now you've seen how it basically works. This is a questing deck and this is a combat deck, which main's purpose is to uh, kill things in the staging area with Descendants, and also it's set up to take out that troll in one turn or two turns at the beginning of the game. So that's what the decks, how the decks function. So if you write into your comments what you would like to name the deck, so we need a deck name for each deck, plus we need a name for the combined decks. And I will call them that, and when this, this will get added to the, uh, to the mod. Okay, well that is that. That is the end of this mode, and I will see you guys next time.